Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be showing you what my UK tropical garden looks like in the month of May. Let's get straight into it. The month from April to May has seen the biggest change so far in the garden, both in terms of uh, growth of established plants and landscaping and planting projects. So we'll make a start in the main uh, difference since the last video back in April, and that is my desert or arid bed. This has been on my mind for a long time since, that, well, a couple of years, um, I've wanted to build a raised bed, specific, specifically with desert planting or drought tolerant planting in mind. And this is what I've come up with. So um, it's edged with sleepers and I've got in the bed a mixture of things. Some things I know are hardy, some things are borderline um, that I'm willing to risk. So you can see down here, we've got the Apuntia humifusa, a couple of agave americanas, yucca restrata at the back there, aloe, um, striatula, just down there behind the Washingtonia robusta. Uh, this is the Apuntia ficus indica that will uh, probably be dug up and overwintered in the greenhouse. And then I've got dotted around the Aristallo, I always forget the name of it, the lace aloe. Got plenty of them dotted around, a few boulders in there. So that's my arid bed. This is another sunny uh, planting bed I've got here. It gets all the afternoon and late evening sun. Um, Euphorbia shillingi really taking off now. It will, it will be about a good metre and a half high this. And uh, in previous years, it has been overshadowing the bananas, but luckily they survived. Uh, the pseudo stems survived winter intact. So they've got a good head start this year. I mean, how many other people can relate to this? You get a leaf come through and almost immediately it's shredded in the wind. I know that they're designed to do that, but it's nice to, you know, see a whole banana leaf, even just for a few days. But there we go, banana grove growing really well and the pups coming through. I've decided for the time being not to divide uh, the grove and replant it because I kind of like it as a, as a bigger grove. Uh, Persicaria red dragon is doing really well. Um, this is all over the uh, garden now. I have propagated this a lot and um, just gives a good contrast to the green. I mean, look at that comp when you compare the Euphorbia to the uh, Perscary, it just looks cool in my opinion. Lupins are coming back. Um, conference pear tree. A few little self-seeded things actually. I mean, I have got a lot of um, Verbena benariensis self-seeded around the garden. And uh, I think this is possibly Rebecca Goldstrom. And there's a lamb's ear that self-seeded from way over there. I had the original plant. The original plant died. And this is now self-seeded everywhere, but I do like it. So I'll, I'll leave it where it self-seeds. This planting bed has changed a lot um, since I last showed it. So let's have a look at this. Um, Hammock area. Yeah, last year this was a wildflower meadow that kind of got out of hand. Um, I think the soil was too nutrient rich for it and the wildflowers just overtook the whole area. Uh, and stopped it being useful as a hammock area. So um, I've got a little bit of self-binding gravel. I've made the paths uh, this past week and I'm going to just maybe plant up a, a couple of bits of lavender maybe in there. And I've got self-seeded bits in there. Uh, giant scabious at the back there. I've got a few other things dotted around. I've got my Paulonia tree here that's kind of been... It is... It's got a few buds on there. You can see but it's been decimated by 
something, probably a slug, so I've got to keep an eye on that. That's my Chuskaya Gigantia, which um, apparently gets to around four meters in diameter. So I don't know how it's going to fit in there, but I'll worry about that when the time comes. It's going to be huge and I think it'll look good to fill this space. And then at the back on my uh, south facing wall, um, we've got the wisteria there that's looking fantastic. I always say this, but I know it's not a um, technically a, a tropical or an exotic um, plant, but I like it. I think it looks good against the black fences. Just an interesting point on the um, wisteria that I read online when I was uh, planting this that you need a 45 centimetre gap uh, between the horizontal branches of the wisteria and it's done really well for me um, using these these metal brackets I got from Amazon. Um, I need to extend that because I've got this jasmine that could do with uh, being trained along uh, across the pergola. I think another job I've got in, in terms of garden design this year, I would like to put a roof on this because we get a lot of uh, pigeons doing the business, sitting up here, doing the business on the cushions. And also when it rains, it takes ages to dry out. So this is our main, this is our seating area um, for most of the day on a sunny day. But then we are, we have got another seating area on the, down there on the uh, patio for the evening sun. But I like sitting, this is my view from um, the hammock. And it will be pretty enclosed come June, July, August. Right, ignore the paint. But we've got the Miscanthus giganteus down here really taking off. And um, I saw Monty Don on Gardener's World this weekend talking about how Miscanthus always uh, grows outwards and it always ends up with a, a bald patch in the middle. And it, you can see there it does. So yeah, it's going to look good. It will cover it up, but eventually it will have to be divided. Um, I planted it here because I like to give the, I like to hide the bridge and make it more of a hidden feature as you're walking through the garden. Um, and here's another, here's a cutting of the Euphorbia shilling guy. Um, a couple of Fatsia japonicas over the, the stream. The jungle stream does need repointing. It's not watertight at the minute, but I will. That's another job for me to get on with. My big tracky there. Um, this is the Tetrapanax that well, it's hollow now down there, a lot, of, a lot of ants on it, but it is pupping and regrowing from the roots, thankfully. So it should come back. It's still small, starting again, but there you go. I have got two more to plant out that will be going in the beds this weekend uh, of the Tetrapanax. Japanese spotted laurel. I've pointed that out before, but um, a really unsung hero of the garden. I would say I love the, the foliage on there. We've got an agapanthus that I totally left out. No protection at all over winter and it's survived. It's smaller than last year because these bits have uh, been killed off in the frost, but it has come back. So agapanthus seems to be hardy for me, root hardy at least. Let's move around, ignore the paving slabs. That's what's left over from the patio extension. Right at pokers are shooting into life. A couple of tulips, these two tulips are survivors from the previous owner. There's not a lot left of what they planted, but that's one of them. Moving around, here's my camera ops. The only one that looks to have survived, although it does look like it's taken some damage in the centre. Let me zoom in on that. How do your camera ops look? Leave a comment, I'd like to know, because these were all a couple of pounds, but of the three, this one looks the only one that's maybe lived to see another day. Lots of Abena and Rebecca in there. Euphorbia, Eucara down here for a bit of contrast colour. Yeah, that's the jungle waterfall. Again, it needs, needs repointing, but it will be a good feature in the heat of summer. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here's my shady border with the barrel pond down there, full of algae again. I'm hoping it balances itself out. There's definitely plenty of oxygenators in there and watercress and mare's tail and um, a mini, uh, a pygmy, a uh, water lily. Elephant ears around there. Um, there's one of my gunneras now. I bought this one. I've bought two gunneras. I've mentioned this a few times, both listed as Manicata, one from a well-known exotics nursery one from ebay this one was from ebay listed as manicata and as you can see from those pinky red flower spikes it is definitely um tinctoria excuse the dogs in the background by the way here's my bigger gunnera tinctoria really doing well uh, at the minute plenty of new growth on my fatsia japonica um, look at the difference though. This one got took a little bit of damage. You can see some more evidence of frost damage down there. Um, but this one seems to be doing well. So I'm hoping for another good foot or two foot of height on there. Cardoon is definitely exploding. Look at the look at the colour, the glaucous leaves and the size of that that was sown from seed last uh, last spring. And I've built a little frame to support the um, the flowers which should be huge i'm looking forward to seeing that in bloom there's my uh, euphorbia mellifera planted last year so still a young plant took a bit of damage to one growing point but it seems to be coming back really well um i would love this to be hardy fully hardy for me and retain the the growth each year but if not i know at least it comes back year on year and then here's my double trunked tracky that i've moved um, I moved that from, it was originally over in the arid bed, but I've moved it here because I think it looks good in front of the greenhouse. So let's have a little look in the greenhouse. Here are my two tetrapanaks. This one I grew from seed and this one I bought, which was uh, an offshoot and they were about the same size last year. So it's interesting to see the difference. I've kept them on it. I mean, this one is in a, in a bigger pot, but I've fed them with chicken manure pellets and I've watered them exactly the same. They've both been in the greenhouse over winter and this one has put on a lot more growth than this one. So I suppose if you're wanting to have a fast growing tetrapanax, grow from seed. There's my Dendrocerus littoralis, the Robinson Crusoe cabbage tree. I know people have planted these out and I am tempted to plant it out, but they, the slugs love them and um, I haven't got the nerve to, to plant it out yet, but thankfully they're both looking really healthy. Even in the greenhouse they have, you know, they are susceptible to pests, etc. And on the shelf I've got this year's Dendrocerus littoralis seedlings out of eight seeds. I managed to germinate five successfully. Up on there I've got pups of Americana um, agave americana and then cacti and succulents on the bench take a little look if you're interested in any ids leave a comment with a timestamp, and i'll i'll let you know but a couple of favorites my lophophora these big old copia poas that's a Copiapoa Hasseltoniana and um, Coquimbana, I think it's called. Multi headed. Euphorbia. Buplifolia. Buplerifolia. Cross with a Susanna. Really nice looking uh, Euphorbia, that one. And I've, this one fell off and I potted it up. But what a cool looking plant. Um, Ariocarpus down there. A couple of astrophytums. Euphorbia obesa. Lithops. I'm not going to water them until I can see uh, this year's growth fully pushed through. And then these two agaves will be planted out eventually, just too small at the minute. I've got the Avatifolia and the Montana, which are both hardier than the Americanas that I've got in the ground, but 
uh, not at that size. A few seedlings down there and whatnot. Sonchus, I'm growing Sonchus for the first time. I've got Sonchus canariensis and Sonchus parmensis. So we'll see how they go. From a design point of view, I've done the curved path that way. I am going to continue the path around this way back to the patio so that you can go on a continuous walk. These paving slabs won't be here, they're just laid out to plan it out, but that's the plan for the, well, I don't know, soon. And finish with some more gratuitous shots of the arid bed. This is currently my pride and joy. I do like sitting on the patio and looking at admiring my work. There we go. My tropical garden in Yorkshire, in the UK, in May. If you enjoy the content, please give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, say hello. Cheers.